Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to welcome you to a new episode of the Prophet's Prayer. With us today is Dr. Yasser Al Fiqi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, last time we explained uh, many of the common mistakes which people do before entering the salah. And now, inshallah, uh, Dr. Yasser is going to help us to demonstrate some of the common mistakes which people do within the salah itself some of which can affect, of course, the validity of the prayer. So if I may ask you, Dr. Yasser, please, to begin presenting the salah, and then we will elaborate and comment on uh, those mistakes. Uh, the very first mistake, of course, that some people misunderstand the concept of intention. Intention is uh, a very necessary part of the prayer and any act of worship. In the prayer or any other ibadah, you don't have to utter the intention. You don't have to pronounce it. You don't have to say, I intend to pray, I, I intend to give sadaqah. Uh, because intention, its source is the heart, and that should be between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you stand up before Allah's hands, it's understood that you're going to pray. Uh, while you are performing wudu and going to the masjid, it's known that to you and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're going to pray asr, maghrib, or isha, etc. So you don't have to announce or pronounce the intention, especially the Prophet ﷺ never did so, nor any of his companions. And he commanded us to follow and not to innovate. The beginning of the salah is by making takbir. Takbir al-ihram is one of the pillars of the salah. Raising the hands along with the takbir is mandatory. Some people would just make takbir and right away would place their hands on their chest without raising the hands as follows. Allahu Akbar. So they missed raising the hands while making takbir, and this is a big mistake. Uh, now, while the Shaykh is putting his hands right on the left, on his chest, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did, and as he was seen, many people would do otherwise, and this is a commonly practiced mistake in the salah. So some people would just let their hands go, and they would not cross their hands on their chest at all. Some people would put the right on the left on their heart for some reason. This is a wrong practice. Some people would put the left on top of the right. This is also wrong. So the right practice is to place the right on the left on the chest as the Prophet ﷺ used to do so. Uh, reciting the Fatiha is one of the pillars of the Salah. So everybody must make sure that he would recite the Fatiha in addition to any other surah or verses of the Qur'an. Reciting the entire Qur'an without reciting the Fatiha in each single rak'ah is not sufficient. And the prayer will not be valid if a person misses the recitation of Al-Fatiha in any, say, rak'ah. The beginning supplications, of course, is an act of sunnah. Some people would belittle that and would ignore it. This is a commonly practiced sunnah, uh, 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 mistake. Uh, a person should learn when two or more of supplications of the beginning of the prayer to prepare himself to begin the prayer while standing before Allah the Almighty. The Sheikh is standing and now he's gazing at the position of sujood where he's going to put his forehead and nose. So that among the common mistakes, people would not look at the position of sujood. Some people would look up, would gaze up. And the Prophet ﷺ warned them by saying that either they quit doing so or they might lose their sight. The right thing is to look to where you're going to make sujood. Similarly, turning right, turning left, looking anywhere around is prohibited while you are in the position of salah. Some people actually think by closing their eyes during the salah that they can develop khushu'a and tranquil. While this is a disliked act, the Prophet ﷺ prohibited one who's praying from closing the eyes while in the salah as the Sheikh is going to demonstrate, while well, the right thing is to look at the position of sujood. Of course, we're going to talk about some other mistakes which people would do if they are uh, in, in praying in jama'ah, such as not reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, relying on the Imams reciting it on, the, on their behalf. Uh, even in the third or the fourth rak'ah, while the Imam should recite on his own as well as the musalli afterwards, especially in the third and fourth rak'ah, that the ma'moom or the follower should recite al-fatiha as well. Imam or ma'moom, everybody must say 
Ameen. Many people do not say Ameen at all. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that, there is a great virtue in reciting Ameen after the Imam finishing reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. Because the followers too say Ameen and the angels as well say Ameen. And whoever is saying of Ameen coincide with the saying of the angels, all his previous sins will be forgiven as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instructed us. Now, some common mistakes in the position of uh, Ruku'ah. Uh, we said that the Prophet Sallallahu said to the person who is not praying properly that you must come to Ruku'ah until you tranquil and you are at ease. So the Shaykh is going to present or demonstrate some of the wrong positions in Ruku'ah, such as not making complete Ruku'ah, have and have. Please, Shaykh. Allahu Akbar. This position, of course, is refused. This is not Ruku'ah. And Allah does not accept a prayer where the person is not completing his Ruku'ah nor his Tajood. Or he might actually do it in excessive by going all the way down. This is also a wrong practice. We also see that the Shaykh is demonstrating another wrong common practice, which is collecting the elbows to his body. A person should keep a distance and spread his arms away from his body while in Rukua. Holding the knees, this is the right practice. Locking the knees and holding them by the hands. That holding any part of the legs instead of the knees, this is a common practice practice from some people that a person while in Ruku should grab hold his knees by his fingers spreading them and hold both his knees now and we say that in Ruku were not allowed to recite any Quran the Prophet ﷺ prohibited the one who's praying from reciting Quran in Ruku or in sujood now the Sheikh is rising up once again to the standing position, saying, Allahu Akbar, without raising his hands. While the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad is to raise his hands as well while rising up from Ruku'ah. Some of the common mistakes being practiced in sujood. The Sheikh is going to perform sujood right now. And we're going to examine some of the common mistakes. Allahu Akbar. One, collecting the elbows to the body and resting them on the thighs. This is a common mistake. Many people do not pay attention to that. Or even resting their elbows on the floor. And the Prophet ﷺ prohibited that and he said that resembles the sitting of a dog. Also, spreading the fingers away from each other. This is a wrong practice. The right is to collect them, to spread your elbows away from your body and lift them away from the floor. And this is the case of a man or a woman in the prayer that applies to every person who is praying. When we come to the back, the feet, there should not be any space between them. They should be collected to each other. So that leaving a space or spreading the legs and leaving a space between the feet is a common practice mistake. We said that the Prophet ﷺ uh, emphasized on that there has to be seven body parts, seven bones touching the floor or resting against the floor while in sujood. The forehead, the nose, the palms, the knees and the toes of the feet. The Sheikh is demonstrating a wrong position while he is resting on the tip of the fingers. This is wrong. Or uplifting the feet or one of them by putting one foot on top of the other. That's incomplete sujood. And of course, if the person does not have all the organs of sujood touching the floor while in sujood, the sujood is invalid. And once touch the invalid in the salah, the entire salah is invalid. Some people would think that it would be sufficient just to put the forehead or the nose. No, both have to touch the floor according to the hadith. So this is the right position. Feet close to each other. Toes pointing towards the qibla. 
forehead, nose, palms, knees, feet, again is the floor completely in the resting position. Those who tend to make a fist while making sujood, that's improper and incorrect as well. Elbows should not touch the floor and should be away from the body of the person who's praying. Unless if he's praying in jama'ah or extremely tired, he may rest them against his thighs. And of course, uh, while you're praying in jama'ah, it's a bit difficult to take that much space. So you just collect them to yourself to give a chance to the person who's praying next to you to pray as well. Well, I think this is a good opportunity to watch some of the common mistakes in sitting in the salah versus the proper way. Some of those mistakes when a person is not sitting at all, almost is uh, sitting up or is standing up, the sheikh is going to demonstrate. Or not sitting on the left foot. So he's sitting up his toes. Actually, this is the wrong position. While the right position is to bend your left foot beneath you like a cushion. This is the right position of sitting in the salah. Uh, I think this is a good opportunity to see physically some of those common mistakes, to avoid them, inshallah, to have our salah perfectly performed and accepted, hopefully, inshallah. Uh, since we still have a few minutes, well, when a person is attending the salah in jama'ah and he sees the imam in the ruku' position, he hurries, he rushes to join the imam. The Prophet sallallahu said that if one is attending the jama'ah and on the way he should not haste, he should walk with tranquility and peace. Then, when you go for ruku', do not forget, since the imam is in the ruku' position, that you have to announce and make takbiratul ihram because it is one of the pillars of the salah. Those who just go for ruku' directly and make takbir while they are in ruku', their entire prayer is invalid because they have not made the beginning takbir. If people are praying in jama'ah, the imam was appointed to be followed so that whenever he says Allahu Akbar, you follow him. Whenever he goes to complete ruku'ah and he rests in that position, now you may proceed. Not before that. Whenever he goes for complete sujood, now you may proceed and follow him. The Prophet ﷺ prohibited us from competing with the Imam, going before him or even going equal to him while he's moving. Because you're not going to reach before the Imam. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, may Allah bless you all and help all of us to pray properly. And I would like to thank Dr. Yasser. Thank you so much for helping us to administrate the common mistakes. And please stay tuned. We'll continue next time with the factors of Hushua. I'll leave you in peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.